If you're looking for that crisp, clear image whenever you're watching movies or TV shows, you might want to take a look at this TV right here. This is the LG UHD TV. And today we're going to be talking about what it's been like to own this thing for one whole month. That's today's tech video. Well, hey guys, Juan here. Thanks for stopping by my channel and checking out this video. So if you're watching this, I imagine you're in the market to buy this TV here, or maybe you are um, you have purchased it and you're looking to get some of the specifics on it. Well, after owning this thing for one whole month, I'm gonna give you my review on this and give you the ins and outs of it. And if I think that this has been a pretty good TV after using it for a month, because I think that usually takes about that much time to really use a product to tell if it's gonna be good or not. So let's go ahead and dive into some of the review portion of this. And then at, toward the end of the video, I'll give you my final analysis on if it's worth it after using it for a month. All right, so first off, it does have that UHD quality that's on the screen here. Right now, I just got like a picture that came on the um, display here, which is a really cool picture, by the way. But it does have the ultra high definition. And if you're gonna buy a TV, make sure you get one that is a UHD TV. I think a lot of the TVs that are coming out nowadays, that's kind of a standard, but make sure that you're looking for that specific name set, UHD TV. Um, I think just because you're gonna future proof yourself if you do buy a TV like that. It does have that 4K quality, that quantum 4K processor core that's inside this thing, which makes it really good whenever you are uh, switching from maybe an app to opening up an app. Um, with that quantum core processor that is built into this TV, it makes it pretty quick to pull up any kind of uh, movie or anything that you're looking to watch. So let's go ahead and pull up one of the menus here. And LG does have a, a pretty fluid menu bar that comes up from the bottom here. And when you first get this TV, it does come pre-installed with all your major apps that you probably use. So it does come with Netflix, your Prime Video, Disney, Hulu, Sling, if anybody has Sling, I don't know anybody that has Sling, um, YouTube, Apple TV, those are already preloaded in there. Now, when I say preloaded, they're on there, but you do have to download each one, but you download it one time. Now, those who may not know, you don't get that app. You gotta have the subscription to that app, but they are on there. Um, but say you don't have a subscription to any of these apps on here, the good thing about LG is they do have some free content that they offer. So over here, if you can see, there is a one that says CH free. And on that, it's kind of like their um, channel that has like almost kind of like a open air TV. Okay, so if you look over here on the menu some more, there's one that's called Peacock. That's like their latest and greatest app that just came to the LG app store. And it's got a slew of free content on there as well. Um, it's got the Google Play Store if you are into that family there of the Google apps. Um, it does have Voodoo, Showtime, Stars, Redbox. Remember, we used to have to go buy it uh, or rent a DVD and then return to the Redbox store. Well, now you can just rent them right here on the app. It's got the CBS All Access, Spotify. So if you do want to listen to any type of music, you can do that right here on TV. And then it's got YouTube TV if you're into that. And then also just well, the regular YouTube app below it. So it has pretty much all your major apps that you're probably looking to consume any type of media on. Now, one that it is missing is the Spectrum TV app, which for myself, that's how I watch regular TV. Unfortunately, Spectrum did sign a deal with Roku and Samsung, so their app only goes on those two platforms. So you can't get the Spectrum TV app on here, but I think that there's a whole slew of other options and if you're looking to get any kind of like live TV media consumption. Now, after testing this TV out for a little bit of time, the one thing that really caught me by surprise is how loud it is. A lot of times I only have to listen to this thing, right here's the volume button, but I usually pull it up to about 18 is where I'm comfortable at listening it to it. And I do have kind of a longer room here. 18 is plenty loud for me, um, so therefore I don't really need a sound bar with this TV. Um, that's just an additional expense. If you're wanting to save a few dollars, I think you'll be okay with that because a lot of these TVs, the sound is just terrible. Uh, but with this one here, it performed pretty well. Now, if you do want to get some of those 
booming bass sounds whenever you're watching your action TV or anything like that, then yeah, look at maybe adding a sound bar to enhance your movie watching experience. But if you're just looking to save a few bucks, this TV, the sound in it will do just fine. Now, like I mentioned before earlier in the video, it does have that quantum core processor that helps push that 4K content on this thing, which is great because it gives you that nice crisp, clear image like this one here that's on the screensaver. Um, that quantum processor helps boost and makes those colors very vibrant and maybe uh, reduces a lot of the uh, noise that would be in an image. Therefore, it does also translate into video watching, giving you that really dynamic color that you're looking for. Also, with that quantum processor core, it upscales the 4K movie watching experience whenever you are watching any type of movies or TV shows that are broadcast in that 4K quality. And with that powerful processor that is built in there, if you are a gamer, it gives you that low input lag. So whenever you're playing any type of games that have a like a first person shooter games or anything that's like maybe driving or maybe uh, sports games where the ball's flying through the air, because of that processor, you're gonna get better clarity and it's gonna be able to interchange with motion of those games giving you a very pleasant gaming experience. Now another good thing with this TV is the thin bezel that is all the way around, making it really nice for your decor because a lot of your TVs that are coming out nowadays, they don't, they try to go as thin as they can on those bezels. This one here does a pretty good job as far as being able to maybe match into your decor. Right now, I just have it sitting on top of a dresser. There are four screw holes on the back, so that way you could mount this on the wall if you wanted to. Now, let's talk about the back a little bit more and let's talk about the inputs that it does have. Okay, so on the back of this thing, there is a USB input in case you're wanting to hook up any type of media player to it. It does have three HDMI inputs with that ARC HDMI in case you're wanting to hook up, uh, you know, one of your game systems like an Xbox or a PlayStation to this. It does have the ARC HDMI input on here also. Giving you other two other HDMI inputs. It does have an Ethernet port in case you're wanting to wire in your internet directly into this. And it does have your RCA jacks with all the color coded. And it does have that old fashioned coax cable in case you're wanting to hook up an antenna to this thing and watch any live open air TV. Okay, and just to give you a quick little look at the remote here, this is what is on the remote. It does have a built-in Netflix button. It's got a built-in uh, Prime Video button and then there's a Movies button right here. So that way you can customize it but it's got all your major um, settings buttons and everything that you would normally need. And the thing I like about it, it does have that push button feel versus having like maybe like a touch screen, kind of like an Apple TV remote. Um, so yeah, this is what the LG remote looks like. And if you are somebody who watches a lot of sports, it does have a 120 Hertz refresh rate to help with that uh, sports watching experience. So for example, whenever uh, you're watching like soccer, and they kick the ball up in the air. And sometimes you would see like a blur on some of those cheaper TVs. With this one here, because of that refresh rate, it's nice, crisp, and clear as it's going through the air. So if you're into sports watching, this would be a good TV for you. And on the smart end, it works for all your major smart devices. So it works with your Google Assistant, your Amazon Alexa, and Apple HomeKit. I ended up setting off my Alexa device anyways. So it does work really well with all your smart companies. Um, the good one is Apple AirPlay is built into this. If you are an iPhone user, you're able to mirror your iPhone to this TV. And I did make a video on that and I can put that in the description down below if you're interested in doing something like that. Now I did talk about the audio earlier in the video, but this one does have a 2.0 channel when it comes to the audio, boosting about 20 watts of power and it is a downward type of uh, audio. So it, the good thing about it is this is mounted up a little bit higher than a lot of your TVs. And because the sound does point downwards, it bounces off like that and goes into the direction of where you're watching or maybe bounces off the wall and kind of helps project it out. But um, it is plenty loud for you. And to give you some dimensions of this TV, because I always like to know what a, a TV measures out to be to see if it fits in my space. This one here, we're gonna talk about with the stand on it. It measures out to be 44 and a half inches on the width right here, and then 28.3 inches on the height. That's with the stand. If you take these legs off, 
it becomes 26.1 inches um, if you were just to go with the top of the TV to the bottom. And then as far as the, the depth on it, you're looking at about 3.4 inches in thickness. And then also the measurement of the uh, stand legs from here to here in case you do have an existing sound bar and you want to see if it's going to fit in there. But the measurement for the legs is 40.9 inches. So that's about how much space you would have to fit maybe a sound bar in there. And then just to give you the weight size of the TV, it's a 24.9 pounds. So it does have a little bit of weight to it, but the bigger the TV, the heavier they are. And then fresh out of the box, whenever you do buy one of these LG TVs, they do come with a one year warranty. Um, I've never really had to use any warranties on my TV. So, and I've never bought any extended warranties myself. That's just me being an average consumer, maybe somewhat of a cheapskate. <laughs> but I never buy any of those extra warranties, but this one does have a one year right out of the box. Okay, so would I recommend this TV after using it for one whole month? I think that if you are using it in maybe a spare bedroom or using it for gaming, I think that it would be a great TV for those situations. As far as maybe making it your main TV in your living room where you got a bunch of people watching it, I think I would probably upgrade to something a little bit better, but I think for the average person that is watching it, in a spare bedroom or gaming, this would be a good TV for you. So maybe this video was helpful to you. Hopefully it was. If you are looking to buy this thing, I'll have a link in the description down below. And if this video, well, if you liked it, make sure you throw a thumbs up on it. Go ahead and subscribe to this channel. I make tech videos all the time and I'd love to have you back in the next one. Thanks for watching guys. Go out there and be creative.